Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over the first day of Winnipeg Jets training camp. We are going to be looking into the lines from Group A and Group B and go over some of the media availability stuff from Rick Bonus. There are a lot of open spots on this team with jobs to be taken and jobs to be earned, so we're going to see how that plays out through training camp, but we're going to look at the day one stuff right now. So everybody's been put into two groups. So in group one here, we have the forward core, Connor, Shifley, and Ehlers. I'll talk about that in a second. Toninato, Gustafson, and Gagne, Malat, Nykonen, and Reichel, and Torgensen, Zilkin, and Lambert. So Connor, Shifley, and Ehlers together does make a lot of sense, and it could be a lot of fun if they do go that route it, during the season, because those are all very fast players, all players can pass, all players can shoot, they can kill you in many different ways, and I think that could be one of the more dangerous lines in hockey, if they are together. This kind of reminds me of what Bonus did in Dallas, where he had one really super offensive line, um, where it was Rupe Hintz and Jason Robertson and then whoever you want to put on the wing, whether that was Garyanov or insert Jamie Benn. So that would be a pretty cool first line if that were to happen. The other line here that I want to talk about is Toninato, Gustafsson, and Gagne. I predicted that Gagne would be playing with Gustafsson and I really do like that. I think that he can really help him come along, maybe feed him some offense. Gustafsson does have a pretty good shot as we've seen on the Manitoba Moose. Toninato's just kind of there to be honest. I'm not sure if that has to do with Morgan Barron being out or not. Barron is going to miss about a week of camp. Uh, so maybe you slot Barron in there. I'm not sure where he would go. Uh, whether it's on this line or a line that I'm going to talk about later. But Toninato fills in that spot and Toninato's an okay fourth liner. Malat and Nykonen make up the next line here with Christian Reichel, and Reichel is one of those guys that I think could jump into the Jets lineup if there are injuries. He showed that he was definitely capable of it last season, showing a bit of offense, but really good on the forecheck, almost like a poor man's Brandon Tanev. Malat and Nykonen will most likely be with the Moose next season. I don't see those guys coming up unless there's a lot of injuries, but I'm interested to see how Nykonen does at the AHL level for a full season. And the last line here, I think it's a lot of fun. You got Daniel Torkinson, Danny Jilkin, and Brad Lambert. Jilkin and Lambert are super fast. Lambert is obviously faster than Jilkin, but Jilkin can fly. They were doing a two-on-one drill today in the training camp, and those guys were a lot of fun to watch. Lambert was just showing a lot of patience, scored a really nice goal, went bar down, and I mean, hey, these two guys could be a lot of fun in the future. I think Jilkin could be a sleeper to be one of the better players in the Jets' future, maybe a really good middle six guy. But that rounds out the forward core. Now we move on to the defense where we have Josh Morrissey and Johnny Kovacevic, Logan Stanley and Leon Gawanka, which I'll go over in a second. Another interesting pairing here with Chisholm and DeMello, and then Sautner and Bauer. So Morrissey and Kovacevic is interesting to me because I think they're really looking to see what they have in Kovacevic, whether he's going to be that seventh guy capable of coming into the lineup or if somebody else is going to pass him in camp. So they are playing him with the veteran Josh Morrissey, who will more than likely be on the first pairing. And I don't mind this at all. I think that Kovacevic is either going to make it or break it this season. He already is 25, but he's definitely competing for that seventh spot with Logan Stanley. And if Stanley doesn't show what Bonus wants him to show, that may very well be Kovacevic's job. Moving on here, we've got Stanley and Gawanka. I find this really interesting because I thought maybe they'd try Stanley and DeMello in training camp and just seeing how those two work together again, but they don't. And instead they go Chisholm and DeMello. So Stanley plays with a guy that's definitely going to be on the moose next year. So that makes me wonder if Stanley really is in the cards for the Jets or not. We'll see how the camp progresses. And this is obviously just day one, but I do think that's interesting on the first day that they've made that decision. And then moving on to Chisholm and DeMello here, Chisholm is arguably the best defenseman whose name wasn't Vili Hainala in the AHL last season. He is a lot of fun, and when he came up with the Jets, he didn't look out of place at all playing with Nate Schmidt. So that's something to watch for sure. If he has a good camp, watch him to make a push. Probably not for this season, but if a couple guys leave next year, if we have a bad year, I could definitely see Chisholm getting time at the end of the year or an adjusted role next season. And to cap off the defense here, we have Sautner and Bauer. I mean, these are two guys that are going to be on the moose next year. They're just trying to see how these guys play together. 
Bauer, I'm not super high on. He is a bit of a pest, but I don't think he's that great. Sautner is from Manitoba, so hopefully he wins a moose job and does well in the AHL. Now moving on to group two, we have for the forwards, Cole Perfetti, Pierre-Luc Dubois, and Blake Wheeler on the top line there. And then we've got Harkins, Lowry, and Appleton. Harkins may or may not be the fill for Morgan Barron. I was imagining Barron on this line. Maybe Harkins has it. I don't know. We'll have to see when Barron comes back. And then we've got Ayu Samant, Stenland, and Manalanen. I think that's how you say it. And then Limoges, Mayer, and Chaz Lucius. We'll start on the first line here. Perfetti, Dubois, and Wheeler does make sense to me because you probably don't want Cole Perfetti right now after not playing hockey since almost February. Getting first line minutes, you're probably just asking for failure from him there. He does need time to get up to speed. And I think playing with Dubois, I mean, Dubois is a bull, right? That guy's going to go forward. He's going to create a lot of space for Perfetti. And Wheeler, I mean, he is slowing down a little bit. Obviously, his skating's not where it was, but he's still a serviceable player. And the Jets do need him right now. And I think that's a fine line. We'll see how that line actually plays if that is the idea going forward for game one. But I think playing with Wheeler is great for Perfetti because Wheeler is going to be that veteran on the line, maybe teach him a couple things. And Dubois, obviously, is just going to create a lot of space and he can score too as well. So I think this is a really fun line and it could be pretty effective in the regular season for the Jets if that line makes it out of camp. Next up is Harkins, Lowry, and Appleton. And I like this line, but I think they've got a lot to prove. I'm not super high on Jansen Harkins. He's just kind of... A defensive guy that doesn't really take advantage of his scoring chances. Adam Lowry, he's up and down. He had a really good second half of last season. I hope that we get that version of Adam Lowry and not the first half. And then Mason Appleton, who was very disappointing since coming back in the trade um, from Seattle. So I hope Appleton can find his form from the 1920 season. Uh, but we'll have to see what happens there. I think this line could be tweaked quite a bit. I'm pretty high on Morgan Barron. I think he played fantastic uh, last season since being acquired from the Rangers when he came up with the Jets, and he was just that much more dominant in the AHL, obviously. So I think that they'll give him his shot for sure, and I think that's one spot absolutely that's up for grabs on the left side. Then we have Aismont, Stenland, and Manalanen. I mean, this is just another example of a moose line. Maybe Kenny Stenland makes the 13th forward spot. Maybe he beats out Toninato, but I'm not sure about that one. Uh, I think he's going to be just a guy that you could call up if you have injuries. And then you've got Limoges, Mayer, and Lucius. Lucius, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how he does uh, come actual preseason games. But I think that he's more than likely going to be with the Moose. I don't really see him competing for a roster spot unless he completely plays out of his mind. We'll see how that goes. The first game, I believe, is on Saturday. So maybe he comes out and plays well. But uh, I don't think that we'll see him on the Jets this season. At least to start, anyway. Moving on to defense, we have Sandberg and Schmidt, Capo Bianco and Pionk, Dylan, Hainala and Kuzman and Lundmark. Sandberg and Schmidt together makes a lot of sense. I think whoever it is out of Sandberg or Hainala to win that sixth spot is going to play with Nate Schmidt on the bottom pairing. So I'm assuming that Hainala and Sandberg will get their fair share of playing with Nate Schmidt this preseason. Moving on to Capo Bianco and Pionk. Capo Bianco is one of those guys that we acquired on a one-way deal that will have to clear waivers to go to the Moose. I don't see a world where this guy is in even the top eight I don't think that he will be playing for the Jets um, I think that he's definitely a waiver candidate and he's probably one of those guys that's just going to get picked up if he doesn't impress but he's going to be playing with Pionk who's a little bit more mobile so we'll see how that plays out in preseason Dylan and Hainala together is interesting with Hainala on the right side even though he's a left hand shot and Dylan on the left side but I do think you could see a lot of moving around with this group I would imagine that Hainala gets his shot with Schmidt, as I was just saying. And then Pionk and Dylan, I could see those two going together. I could see Schmidt and Dylan playing together. Uh, we'll have to see how that all rolls out in preseason. And then we finish with Kuzman and Lundmark. Both those guys played really well in the Young Stars Classic for Winnipeg. Kuzman is super interesting to me. He's only 5'9", he's a smaller body, but that guy makes 
big time plays. The Belarusian defenseman had a fantastic year in the OHL last year. And we'll see how those guys go. Simon Lundmark, um, obviously second round pick. He's done well with the Moose last year. He struggled to get into action a little bit last season with Manitoba, but I think he will have a much larger role this season. Not going to waste my time talking about goaltenders because we pretty much know how that situation is going to run itself. Connor Hellebuck is going to be the starter. Dave Riddich is going to be the backup unless he does absolutely awful in preseason. Um, and then I'd imagine the Jets would either try to get someone on waivers or make a small trade that way. Training camp's going to be a lot of fun this year. Lots of jobs up for grabs and we'll see how that all shakes out in preseason. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about was Rick Bonus in the media availability after the training camp today, saying that he wants to give the defenseman a green light to play more offensively this year. It's been no secret that Winnipeg's defensemen have not been scoring machines over the last couple years, being really conservative and just really boring, not really allowed to jump into the play and create anything offensively. So this is huge. This is going to elevate the Jets game big time in my opinion. I think that you could see Nate Schmidt be a little bit more active. I think that Neil Pionk benefits big time from this. And I think this is a very welcome addition for Vili Hainala being able to use his offensive creativity that he had on the Moose and in the Finnish leagues. I think that he's going to flourish and I really think that this could be Hainala's time to step into the top six. The forward core isn't as outstanding as it has been in past years, obviously not having Paul Stastny and Andrew Kopp, and there are guys that could fill into those positions obviously, but if they don't, and if the offense is slow some nights, it's nice that the Blue Liners will have an opportunity to chip in offensively as well. And that'll do it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'd love to know who you think who the surprise of camp could be. Do you think it's Hainla? Do you think it's Sandberg? Do you think Jansen Harkins comes out and lights it up? Or do you think Chaz Lucius or Brad Lambert win a spot somehow? Let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, so that's where I'm going to leave it. Have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.